Today, we're going to talk about scheduling and room closures and restrictions. My name is Nancy Gillen. I'm the senior applications person with ERAT, um, and I will be presenting today. Knowing that the scheduling configuration is very confusing, but it's a powerful way to control um, when the site is open, when a room is open, what procedures can be scheduled in those rooms. It can be used to override how long a procedure takes in a certain room and create other exceptions to scheduling rules. It can also be used to hold and therefore hide time slots from the scheduling search engine and automatically release these holds at a certain time. There's different types of templates. Um, the first one is business hours, which can be associated to a site. Um, so different sites can have different business hours. Device availability is when the room or the modality is open. So you can have business hours, maybe your front office opens at 630, but you actually don't start x-raying people till seven or eight, um, or certain rooms can open at different times. When we have procedure availability, which is associated to a procedure code via the scheduling group. So this is when just certain procedures might be done um, versus just having the room wide open to schedule all CTs. Maybe you only do biopsies certain times of the day or days of the week. Then with resource scheduling, we have the tech availability and we have the radiologist availability. We're not gonna go into resource scheduling today. That can be a webinar all in itself, um, but we will have to talk about it and touch base with it through this presentation. The hierarchy of the templates are, is the facility open? Is the modality available? Can the procedure be done on that modality? Is the technology just available again with resource scheduling and is the radiologist available again with resource scheduling? So, when it comes down to it, what we have is the business hours should always be the longest amount open. The device may have certain different hours. The procedure itself may be done during certain hours. Possibly the tech is available only certain hours. So here we have a block for lunch. The radiologist doesn't come in till nine and only works till five. So these are the three time slots that we would see as results when all of this is put together. The business hours are any site that will be open for business. Um, so the exam, example would be like from seven to 1900, not for individual rooms, but that's for the business hours itself of that clinic. So you can see here, we are open um, Monday through Thursday, uh, Monday through Thursday till 7 p.m. On Friday, um, we're only open till five, and then we have a half a day on Sunday and nothing on, um, excuse me, half a day on Saturday, and then not open at all on Sunday. Note that if the business hour template is applied at the site level, the appointment book will reflect those hours. And that's been kind of a, a little tricky thing um, with some customers of not having that availability template in here causes the book to look like it's not grayed out in certain areas. And that will be my next example. So here you can see that the first three rooms, CT Lemon, Lime, and Orange, um, have that applied to the site, excuse me, configuration. Tangerine does not have a template at the site level. This is also the template that's used for portal scheduling if you do do portable scheduling at your facility. Then we have the device availability. When is the room open with that device in it? It will need a default template that includes all the days and hours that the room is open. And I'm gonna kind of pause here and talk a minute about um, holidays. So holidays are, are dead closures. 
we have had people, you know, try to schedule on a holiday saying, well, we're just going to keep our MRI open on 4th of July to kind of catch up. Well, if it's in the holiday configuration, it knows that that room is not open because the clinic is not open. So if you ever have trouble scheduling on a holiday, you have to look back at the holiday table, not the device availability. Okay, so that's going to drive things. So then the clinic has to be open on Wednesdays. The device has to be available on a Wednesday, I'm assuming 4th of July is on a Wednesday. But we wouldn't want to close the room. We wouldn't want to have that in there as a holiday if even one room is open in the entire facility. So even if you have multiple, multiple sites and only one of them is going to do MRIs on 4th of July, 4th of July needs to not be designated as a holiday. So here you can see that we have the device availability, and this is actually the same as the business hours, which is great because you can clone some of this and it makes it a lot easier to do. Even if you just have to go back and change one time slot, it's a lot easier to clone than to have to do this all the way through independently. Then we can have some alternate templates. Um, other templates can be applied as needed. Uh, below we have summer hours. So what we have is this room from tomorrow through August has summer hours and it's an active template and we made those hours a little bit different than the normal hours. What's going to happen on September 1st? This is going to expire and the regular one will take over again. So you know that you can change things for just a temporary amount of time. Um, and apply that template. Once that template is expired, it will now default back to whatever the default is for that template. Procedure availability defines when certain procedures can be um, performed. And I always use MAMO as an example because we do, with our MAMO folks, we usually do have these restrictions built. So what we've got here is the diagnostic, MG diagnostic is a procedure availability. So what we've got here, if you look at Monday, we do these on Monday from eight to 12. Um, we don't have a duration override. Um, that can be for a specific site. Um, say you have an older machine in one site and it takes longer to do. You can adjust the duration um, here by adding additional time to it. The reservation of three days means that within three days of that date, if you don't have an MG diagnostic to put in that slot, you can put in a screening mammo. Okay, because you don't want to leave the room open if you don't have to. So that's a good way to kind of block it for a temporary amount of time, and then it releases itself as being available to other procedures when this procedure is not booked and you define the time range. Um, in the modality table, you have the ability to close or restrict dates and times. Um, a closure is a hard stop. Nobody can schedule in it. It's not even available when you do a search. Um, a, a restriction is more of, gee, a little warning that we're going to give you that um, the room could be opened if it had to be, but would like to not keep it open or open for certain procedures or even certain doctors. Um, so sometimes if you have a facility where maybe an outside physician comes in or referring to do a biopsy or something like that, you can hold a room. Um, for that doctor for a certain amount of time, you'd have to kind of put in a fake procedure to do that. We have to trick the system a little bit, but it can be done. Um, so here we show that service is being done on this machine from 8 to noon on the 24th. So we want this as a closure because the room's not going to be available at all. We don't want anything scheduled in there. Okay. So it's on a Monday, we're just going to pick that Monday and leave it at that. Um, don't use full range, it completely closes the room and can cause all kinds of problems. Um, if you have a restriction, um, so this one we have stats only. Um, 
from three to five on Fridays, and we have it running from from March through the end of the year that we decided to hold Fridays for stats. Doesn't mean you can't schedule anything in it, it means you're gonna get a warning that it's for stats only. So here you can see what the restriction looks like um, on the appointment book. Um, we have a restriction to the far right, that's for lunch, and a restriction at CT Lime that's stats only um, from three to five on Friday. This will show restrictions, but as you can see here, it still shows up as a choice in yellow, but it's restricted. And when they click on it, it will tell them what it's restricted for. With the right permissions, um, they can override that if need be. So this is an example um, of a room closure versus a restriction and what it looks like in the appointment book. The closure is completely grayed out and the restriction is just a yellow spot and it's letting you know what's in those slots at that time. Here you can see that we have a closure, that closure from eight to 12 for service. If you look under line, you can see that from eight to 12, it's not even showing appointments. So that's why we really like people to do a search because if a room is closed, they're gonna see this. Um, you know, it's not even an available time slot where the restriction shows up as an available time slot, but with restrictions. Um, you can also create a closure from the appointment book um, by just a right click in the time slot and it says create closure, but it's closure or restriction, which I'll show you in the next slide. So next we have, um, we don't have a tech available from eight to nine. She's got a doctor's appointment before she comes in we're gonna close that modality. So I'm gonna choose modality closure for that one. So nothing can be scheduled in there. A restriction would be more like, oh, keep it light, the tech's not feeling well, or you know, maybe we wanna put biopsies in there, but if we don't have any biopsies, we wanna go ahead and schedule. That can also be done by uh, procedure availability as well, or some people just like to kind of see it in, in their schedule book and not really have it set um, to the where they can't schedule. It's more of just a warning that maybe they have to think about why they're using this time slot. So a few tips um, that this team has come across through, the, through time. Um, procedures um, must be added to scheduling groups to show in the search. Okay, so we see this a lot. Um, a call comes in from support. They need, they added a procedure, they added a billing code, but they're not seeing it available to actually schedule in a room. Make sure it's added to a scheduling group. For the bigger sites that we have that have different scheduling groups, the user must be in that scheduling group as well. <laughs> when using multiple templates, um, watch for overlapping dates and times. If it's possible, delete the ones in the past to make troubleshooting easier. So that restriction that we had um, on the room, the closure for that day, if you know the next time that that service repair person is coming in to do another PM, take that same one, change the date on it, or delete it and start a new one. If you have, um, if you start closing a lot of rooms back and forth, your list grows so hard, it's really hard to kind of troubleshoot, why can I schedule this? And then you have to start looking at each individual um, availability template, what was the start date, what's the end date, what's it limiting? And just keep in mind that procedure plans use the same logic. So if you're, um, if you've got somebody coming in for an arthrogram and you know, you're looking for a flora room to inject in, you may have one open tomorrow, but the MRI machine might be booked out two weeks. So that's going to reflect um, whatever you do in your procedure plans as well. Don't use full range, it will close the room. Okay, I am going to stop recording.